With a 1-0 lead over his opponent, we have the first Wunjing Stars player to the top left. He is... Wunjing Stars SOS! Strong game, game number one. He's up against a teammate. For the bottom left of Whirlwind, we have... Wungjin Stars Fly! Flying. Just not able to hold that push. The build order he chose was a good one, but on that map, Neo Planet S is so big, you can't really punish your opponent's Nexus. You have to just try to tech fast on them, which he only teched slightly faster. So just, he was in a bad spot to utilize his tech advantage, and then he did not micro as well as SOS did. Yeah, it was really an interesting game, and this is just what we echoed already earlier. Flying is a little bit under pressure here, and SOS with a very strong uh, game one. If he can uh, surprise Flying once again, maybe, then he would be able to advance to Code S with a 2-0 victory. He has played a very strong Code A season, and I have to say that to me he's the favorite player here with the additional experience that he has, and also he just makes a much more confident impression when you see him in the booth. Yeah, completely agree. In this matchup, he just he seems to have it a little bit more figured out, despite the fact that Flying has shown such great play in other matchups in the past, especially when players were first switching over. See if he can carry this on. He was able to advance all the way to the round three, so you have to give that to him as well. Not, yeah. And of course, one of the things that you kind of wanted to avoid, which both of those guys have been able to achieve, is just not falling into Code B. Uh, this Heart of the Swamp transition is one of the things that we point out several times, but it's just so important. And if you suddenly have to play the Code A qualifier again in Heart of the Swamp, it's so much more difficult for you to actually win it because there's so many new strategies out there and you will always be blindsided by a newest tactic that you haven't seen yet. Yeah. And... You know, just going into what you talked about before with Heart of the Swarm and how important it is, it's it's just something that's undervalued, I feel, by people who are fans of StarCraft 2 right now. These two players that are playing in this match, it's assumed that they're practicing a lot of Wings of Liberty, but they may actually not be playing Wings of Liberty at all because they feel in the long run it's much more important for them to be playing Heart of the Swarm right now. We don't know. I actually couldn't tell you. Yeah, it's really difficult. You can really see that a lot of players are struggling a little bit to find a balance between the two games and uh, quite a few of them have already quite, yeah, pretty loudly complained that it's just so difficult for them with the tournament structures that we currently have to prepare for their matches. If you think about Pro League, Pro League for another few, uh, I think two more rounds will be in Wings of Liberty, then the players have to transition over to Heart of the Swarm. There's still tournaments like IPL that will run with Wings of Liberty, the next IM is in Heart of the Swarm. Yeah. So you have all this bouncing back and forth and depending on how many of in how many tournaments you actually participate, you will actually have to practice both. Yeah. And it may not even be up to, especially in the Castle Players case, well, let's talk about this crazy fight for just a second. First shot to get off here for flying, but now he's got the advantage here with his stalker count as well. That zealot for SOS getting way ahead of himself. Additional gateways now added for both yeah, of them. They're both doing almost identical yeah. builds. This just goes to show the Supros versus Supros from a team kill. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it really starts to look more and more like. They are teammates and they mirrored each other's strategy already in game number one. Exactly the same thing <laughs> is what we are seeing in game number two. Here comes the scout for SOS. He sees the pile already and there's the warping. Oh wow, this is actually really scary for SOS. Problem for flying is that not all of his units are there together. This is going to be really important, this first warp in. He needs a warp in away from the Stalkers, and so far he does. The Zealot, though, does get caught. Dealing some damage to the shields. The rest of the Stalkers still aren't here yet for flying. Yeah, flying is trying to get his army together, but yeah, SOS has a really good position on the high ground now. Yeah, and all he needs to do, and he doesn't even have to, but he could warp in one sentry. Pylon here is taken out, but now he's got more, and he gets in, he walks in, literally. Yeah, but he is now in a position where he will fight against more stalks than his opponent yeah. has, and he will... We have still a little bit of a lead in economy for SS. This will matter over time, but Micro is, of course, now the most important factor. Yeah, Flying has a lot more bank here because of the pylons that SOS just threw down at the top of the ramp. He did have to cancel two of those. This is looking really stressful for SOS. He just needs to hold on a little bit longer, but his soccer is so low on hit points. He does warp in a sentry, but is it in time? Here we go! He's a force yes. field, he does! He gets it, he has to micro back now with the rest of his stalkers. He could have done this a lot better. If he would have moved back immediately, he could have picked up those two at the front. But now he lost three on his own. 
is still in a good position here, though, but it could have been already a very game-deciding uh, battle. Yeah, Flying is now desperate. He's trying to continue the attack. His opponent doesn't have a sentry ready just yet. He has to make this attack work right now, and it looks like he may just do that. He has the Stalker advantage, SOS warps in a few more units here. He might be able to push through, he took down the sentry already, and SOS is in a little bit of trouble here. Another round of warp ins for flying. He needs another sentry, SOS does. He's still on cooldown with his warp gates, he's chrono boosting them, he warps in a zealot. He's trying to block the ramp with those probes, these are the extra probes that he had. He's still a little bit ahead, but he loses mining time, and so many Stalkers now for flying. Flying is going up the ramp, he's taking it. Excellent micro here by flying, and it looks like SOS is going to have to go into a game three here. Last of the Stalkers starting to fall, and he is just ignoring the probes and zealots, only targeting the Stalkers. Really great micro here. He still has five Stalkers. He can warp, out, warp in another round of units. This is exactly what he does. He's up to seven now. He's walking into the main base. That's just way too much. And SS, he types GG. GG indeed. That was a micro battle, a decision making battle as well, but both players doing almost identically the same build. And the advantages in the fights were always going to flying. He just had one step ahead. His round of warpins was always one step yeah. ahead of SOS's. But still, SOS made a major mistake. When he warped in the sentry, he used the force field and he trapped two stalkers on his side of the force field. He could at any point have moved back with his stalkers, picked those two off without losing anything, yes. and then he would have had a lead. But he stayed at the front where all the stalkers that got shut out that were still at the bottom of the ramp could still participate in the fight. He also made the mistake of thinking that he could could out maneuver his opponent with the probes. As soon as he saw that pylon warping in those stalkers, he should have made two sentries. If he had done that, he would have been able to hold it off forever. Yeah. This force field was just so crucial. He could have really taken this game, but it's flying. He thought he could do it, you know, with his own gateways and his own stalker force. He maybe misread how many gateways flying, and he didn't know it was three. Maybe he thought it was two. Yeah. Well, in the end, flying takes it, so now it's 1-1, one -one, and this is where the pressure Comes down to both players. Who is going to advance? They are teammates, they are both Protoss players. They want to advance to Code S, but only one can pull through. Daybreak is the last map for our PvP, our first best of three of the day. Guys, get ready for this match between SOS and Flying. This is the GSL Code A. We are in our third day. The winner advances to the finals. Not quite, but at least to Code S. Yes. Who is it going to be? We're going to find out right now at GSL Code A with Colin Wolf.